everyone welcome back uh, so this is the short and sweet version uh, I'm not going to get in details on how to set up the patterns and stuff like that we're just basically going to go through the charts and and talk about entries and exits pretty much uh, anyways if you want to get more finer or more uh, more specific details check out the uh, the full one hour um, session that I did uh, right here all right let's just dive right into it so um, I just gonna I got a bunch of stocks I'm just gonna pick and we'll just go through them and see if the patterns work for them or not uh, first one I got here is PRNT which is one of ARX funds uh, it's considered a growth stock it's mostly uh, 3d printing stocks so uh, Let's have a look at it um, so I'm just gonna zoom in here just pick a random spot to enter uh, let's get started say oh zoom in a bit more all right let's start off right here let's say we're looking at this one around this time here haven't got in yet and um, I'm going to go through with the 50 first and we'll take the 20 off So, um, so this is the time you start looking at this stock. You're going to pick an entry spot right here. So we're looking for the first close above the 50. And of course, check out the old video if you want to know my specific way of getting into that using the either pre and post market or uh, end of day trading. But anyways, uh, so we're looking for a break of the 50. It goes above the 50 right here, pulls back a little bit, and at the end of the day, we purchase the stocks at this point. Um, so here would be our entry. I'm just going to put the ruler on. Actually, not yet. Got to zoom out a bit and see how far it went. I'll put the ruler on so we would have entered right here. It went up, and our exit is basically whenever it closes below the 50. So we buy and sell prior to the close that way is the last couple of minutes before the close to make sure it's confirmed rather than wait until the next day but anyways we're going to follow it right up it sort of faked us out right here but it went back up I closed above the 50 so we wouldn't have gotten back out and our exit would have been down here huh? unfortunately we took a nice bit of a dive there and lost a bit but that's the nature of the beast in this one. So we would have exit right here, enter right here, and that would be 5.75% profit. And looks like one, two, three, about four months. That's not a whole lot of gain, but profit's a profit. Now here's the important part because we got out here. We would have missed all this downside, and that's the part I don't like being in on. Because you're just sitting and praying and not sleeping very good at night. And if you would have stuck in and not followed the 50-day moving average break, you could have potentially at one point been down as low as 37% loss from the exit uh, place. Not really something I like to stick in for. So I'd rather, you know, take little tiny losses and run the winner right to the top. Or not to the top, as close to the top as I can get. But uh, I'd rather take little tiny losses, not big giant losses. Um, next time, we're waiting for the next cross above the 50, which is right here. Now this one here, you did almost a full month, maybe a month and a half, where it's just up and down. So you're, you're green, you're red, you're green, you're red. And then it finally starts to take off. So two months of just waiting and waiting and waiting for this to do something. It hasn't closed below the 50 yet. So we're going to follow it all the way up. And this one's already out too far already. Hold on. Just give me a second. I'll zoom in. So our entry was right here. And of course, it would have been right at the top of the candle because we're uh, buying close to the end of the day. It's going to run up. It almost took us out here. And then it would have run all the way up again. And then it looks like it closed below the 50 right here. So we would have gotten out at this level. And that would have been a 26.18% profit in three, four, five, five and a half, six months. So that's not too bad, 26%. Um, that's actually a great profit. And then, of course, we're out for this little dip here. We would have jumped back in on this green candle here at the top 
at the end of the day it did dip below and then it went back up and oh unfortunately it closed down here so it would have took a tiny little half a percent loss so a little tiny loss there unfortunately and we would have waited almost two months for that loss to play out um, and then we have one more here we'll do one more why not and then I'll go on to the next stock. I'm going to try to turn that ruler off first. Zoom in. So the next entry. So we got out here with a little tiny loss. The next one would have been a close right on this little green candle. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit more. All right. So ruler. Close on this green candle right here. You would have followed it up. It didn't go below the 50. And of course our exit would have been right here where it closed just about to close below the 50 right here. So that would have been a 53.64% profit. So can't complain about that. Now I'm going to mention one more thing here. If you look at our my previous one hour video, I talk a little bit more details with this. Uh, but when you're... When your stock has gone very far above the 50 day moving average, um, I tend to get a little bit nervous and I like to try to lock in some profit. So right now from the top of this, uh, from the top of the chart here where the share price is, there's a difference between the share price and the um, 50 day moving average of nearly 30 percent and i tend to get a little bit uncomfortable at when there's such a big gap here because i'm going to lose some of that profit if i just follow the 50 as i would have right here um, another thing that i i look at is the rsi so when the rsi starts triggering up here is above 70 and this one's a nice bit above 70 but when it starts getting above 70 i usually like to put my 20 back on and rather than waiting for it to come all the way down here where I'm going to lose a nice chunk of extra profit, that's an extra almost 12%, rather than getting out down here and potentially cutting some of my profits, I will use the close as my, uh, as my exit point. So when it comes down to the 20 and I would ex would have exit right here as opposed to down here. And that would be a, a locked in or not locked in there yeah that would be an extra 10 percent profit i could have kept on this particular trade by using this method anyways we'll turn the 20 off again uh should we do some more uh, let's just go on to the next one uh what are we gonna do uh let's do a cryptocurrency we'll do ethereum eth uh now, which one are we going to use? Well, let's just use the Coinbase one. All right, we'll stick that on. Pick a spot to enter. What's this? Doesn't matter. Let's just go dive in right here. We don't want to be too far out. We'll pick this spot as our entry point just to, um, you know, we start looking at it at this point for a, a, a good play. Uh, so, I got our 50 on. I'm going to take the 20 off take my ruler so right here now here is the part about this uh, strategy you are going to take little tiny losses but the goal is you're going to cut those losses real quick so you're going to take a half a percent a one percent sometimes two maybe maybe a little bit more but you want to catch the big runs so you take little tiny losses and then eventually you'll catch a big run if you're trading um if you're trading um, really good growth stocks so if you look here it would have come above the 50 here that would have been on my entry and unfortunately it closed below so the next day I would have gotten out with whew, six percent loss six and a half percent loss that's not great but they do happen and then of course I would have had another entry here the second day it stayed above the 50, but unfortunately it closed below the 50 right here. So I would have had another one, maybe one and a half percent. So this one's not starting out very good. However, what's that? We got three, seven, what, four, four or five percent lost already. That's okay. We're playing the pattern. 
The next one we would have gotten in here when it closed above the 50. We would have rolled it up and then it would have closed right here. So we took back 2%. So that's not too bad. We're only down, what, roughly 3 or 4%. Then, of course, the next one didn't break, didn't break. It broke right here. We would have entered, and here we finally hit a nice runner. It ran all the way up. And here's the sucky part. We are really far up above the 50. So I probably would have used a 20, but if we stuck with the 50, it would have come back down. It would have broke through. You would have been all the way down to here, barely 1% profit. Ooh. But it did come back up here and close. So in this situation, we would have made a 36% profit. However, if I did slap that 20 on, because it's the RSI is showing that it's a little bit iffy is a bit overbought. So the RSI is showing this overbought signal. So I would uh, put the, oh, hold on, get rid of that. I will put the 20 back on. And then, of course, I'm going to use the 20 as my exit. So opposed to just getting that, uh, what was it, 35% profit this time, I'm going to use a different exit strategy, which is the 20. And that would have closed here. And I would have had an 82% profit as opposed to 30 something percent profit. So that's why I use the 20. Now that trade is over. I'm going to stick the, uh, da, 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 take the 20 off again. And of course, as you can see, we're below the 50. If you would have just held on to this thing from here down, you could have potentially been down another additional 30%. So I'd rather let this ride out. We probably would have took a little bit of a loss on here. So if we're still watching this one, and in the first video I did mention about how to set up alarms, and the next video I'm going to do on how to set up the chart and stuff, I'm going to talk about how to use alarms. That way you don't have to be watching the stocks, you'll get, literally get a text message saying a particular stock is in play, we go and check it at the end of the day and we buy, we either buy it or we don't buy it based on uh, the chart. Anyway, check out the first video for that and the next video coming up on the uh, chart set up if you want to see those more finer details so with that being said I have my ruler here my entry would have been here I would have gotten out here that would have been almost a 5% loss on that little one and then of course I would have been out for this big dip down almost my my trigger would have went off here but I wouldn't have bought because it didn't close above the five the 50 and then the next one turned out to be a good play. So my entry would have been here. It would have rolled all the way up. RSI is triggered up here. So I may have put my 20 back on. So if I didn't put the 20 back on, it would have faked out right here. So you would have got an alarm saying time to sell, but you didn't sell because it stayed above the 50. And then of course, our exit would have been right here at the end of the day, which is a 35% profit. However, that's 35. If we did put our 20 on, because it's quite far above the 50 with the RSI signaling uh, over overbought, we will use our 20 as our exit. So if we did the 20 for this one, it would have come up and we would have gotten out here as opposed to the 50 again. And that would have been a 56 instead of a 35. Um, so yeah, uh, that's just two main strategies I follow. Sometimes I'll do just the twenties. If you have a really uh, active stock, I might do the twenties as my entry and exits. But I usually just do the fifty and, and use my twenty as a, as an exit if it's really far away from the fifty. Uh, I'm not going to do the rest of this. We got a bunch more to talk about before we get into it. Uh, let's look at AMC. Seems to be popular. Is uh, one of those Wall Street bets favorites? Could you have traded AMC uh, using this strategy? Let's have a look. Uh, AMC. So I'm going to zoom out. Now, I actually got in on this one, and I got out right here on the 20, which I sold at around 50, I believe it was around 52, 53. Yeah, that's roughly around where I got out. So it was around 52, 53. So I actually sold here. I bought it right around this level here. So I actually played it based on Wall Street Bits, but uh, 
anyways, I don't recommend jumping on that stuff. Uh, it's a bit more risky and you don't know how it's going to go. And I didn't buy stocks. I actually use call options for that one. That way I limit my risk a bit and it was more a complete gamble. But um, what we'll do is we'll disable our 20 just to show you how it would work. I'm going to zoom right in. So you're hearing all this news on uh, Wall Street Bets and you decide this is going to be something you're going to play, which, like I say, this is really high risk because it's uh, it's based on just uh, talk. So entry would have been right here, which was May 12th. That's, no, uh, probably would have been here because that one's sort of on the 50. So let's zoom out. So May 13th. All right, so May 13th, we would have gotten in here. It stayed above the 50, so we wouldn't have gotten out. We would have rolled it all the way up. It's really super far past the 50, so I would have put the 20 on, which is what I did. It would have come down, it would have went up, and then it would have come down. Now, if we were using only the 50, we would have still had 166% profit, which you can't really complain about that because the exit would have been here. However, when it gets really far above the 50, so let's just look how far above the 50 this is. So from the peak down, the difference is 81%. Yeah, that's, and their RSI is triggering as well. So I would stick the 20 back on as my exit because it's really far away from the 50. And then of course my exit, which is, this is an actual one that I actually played here entry all the way up and then a close below the 50 at 40 54 bucks and that would have been a 327 percent profit so just so you're aware you can do this with even the uh, momentum stocks that people are talking about now like i say i don't recommend doing the momentum stocks because they're high risk um and you don't know if they're actually going to go or not. So just be real cautious with anything like that. All right, what do we have? Uh, let's look at another one. Um, let's do Amazon or we can do ARK, the ARK um, one as well. Let's do Amazon as more of a... Amazon is more of a... More of a well-known stock. Let's go out a bit here. What are we going to pick? Let's pick this location right here. Somewhere before 2020. So we're eyeing this one as our entry. I'm going to turn the 20 off for now. Use the 50. Here would be, say this was our entry. Let's stick that rule around. We would have gotten in here at the end of the day. It would have went up. It almost went below the 50. Didn't. And then it went up again came down and then it closed below the 50 here which is our exit and that would have been 6.71 percent profit not bad we probably would have got in here and took a little bit of a loss and then another little bit of a loss let's see how much that would have been so entry here exit here that's two and a half and then another one would have been an entry here and an exit here and that's two and a half, so five percent. How much did we get on the first one? So we're we're still in the profit by a little bit. So like I say, you're not going to have all winners, but if you have a, a nice list, say ten stocks, and that you're trading, if one, two, three, even half of them don't work out, and you're cutting your losses real quick and taking little tiny losses, if you even get half of your stocks to have a good run and you get get profit, then you should end up in the green at the end of the year, hopefully. So it would have come up, didn't go above the 50. Here's another loss we would have took here. This one's not doing great. So this one's not as much of not as much of a disruptive type of play because it's been around for a while. So these patterns don't work out as good for these ones, but they do. So we lost two and a half percent. So we're probably in the negatives on this one now. Um, it went up and down. Yeah, we would have been in the negatives on this one. So we're, now we're down another 2.5%. So we're underwater on Amazon. But we finally would have caught a break at one point. 
That's why you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. If you were putting all of your money into one stock, Amazon, you would have been down a little bit on this one. So if you had a, a, a nice mixture of different stocks and even ETFs, stocks, ETFs, which I like ETFs the most, or um, even some cryptocurrency, uh, you could be trading all of them. And hopefully if you get a good chunk of them uh, working out in this type of, uh, of trading pattern, then uh, hopefully you'll come out with a good profit so rulers on I'm going to have to zoom out on this one because it looked like it ran up quite a bit and of course this is Amazon so that had quite a bit of a run there let's stick the ruler on so our entry would have been right here and it hasn't touched the 50 in a while now right up at, at here the RSI is triggering I'll have a look at the percentage there but I might have put the 20 on here but if we stuck with the 50 we would have probably, you notice that green candle did close below the 50 right there. So that probably would have been our exit point, which is a 57.85% profit. Now, if I stuck the 20 on, let's see what the gap is here. So from the top to the 50, yes, yeah, 20%. I probably would have went with the 20 on that one as my exit. Let's stick that 20 on. So... So it starts hitting the RSI, starts going off up here uh, above 70. I'll stick my 20 on, and then I'm going to play the 20. My exit would have probably was right on it, right? That red candle's right on it. That green one, I might not have gotten out right there, but I definitely would have gotten out right here. So let's see. Here's the entry, and we would have gotten out right about here so 50.79 percent profit so we still made profit even though we used the 20 what was the profit on the 50 again 50 cent looked like we made more money using the 50 on this one <laughs> anyways and then of course trade it sort of sideways for a bit so you probably would have had a few small wins small losses you would have let's take the 50 off or take the 20 off, sorry. So you would have been out here. So from the exit point here down, that could have potentially been another 7% loss if you were sticking around to it. Sticking around. Uh, probably would have took a little loss here. I'm not going to use the ruler for these ones. Probably would have took a little loss, a little loss. This one would have been probably another little loss. So you would have took a few losses on Amazon and then one big run. And then, yeah... Maybe a little tiny bit of a profit there. A little tiny profit on that one. Uh, a little tiny bit of profit on that one. So, yeah. Ones that are well established that are just, you know, tra trading sideways. You're probably going to have, hopefully, equal uh, small losses and small wins to average out. But the main goal you're looking for is to eventually hit a nice runner like this one here. Uh, even this one here is not too bad. A little bit of a runner there. A nice run there. Nice run here. You would have had another one here. So you take all these little tiny losses and wins. And then eventually you get a nice run. But it only works real well on the growth stocks. I mean if you're trading like um, if you're trading like Walmart or, or uh, Costco or something like that. You're not going to probably get these big runs up like this. Uh, you're going to get little tiny runs up, and this strategy may not work as well for those more stable, well-established stocks, and that's why it probably is not working as good for Amazon, because Amazon's been around for a while. All right, let's look, uh, let's try one more. Let's look at ARC. Let's see, ARC. So this is ARC Fund. Um, uh, run by Kathy Woods. So we're going to check this one out. Let's just zoom out a bit so we can start off at a nice little little bit of a distance from where it's to today. Uh, where are we to now? Let's start somewhere in the mid of 2019. Let's just say we're looking at it mid-2019, so we probably would have been out for all of this here. And then, of course, here's our first run. I'm going to have to go out a bit because it looks like it really moved quite a bit. So our first uh, entry, just above the 50, so probably would have got in here. 
would have rolled it all the way up. Now the RSI is triggering here and it looks like a big gap so I might have put in a 20 on here but if I didn't the exit may have either been this red candle or this one. Let's go with this one. Give us a 19.4% profit. And that's what? About six months? One, two, three, four, some couple months. Uh, but if I did stick the 20 on, turn that back on. So if it's RSI is really showing overbought and it's not a nice distance from the 50, which would have been 12, 13%, that's actually not that bad. But if we did stick on the 20 and we would have gotten in right here, our exit on the 20 would have been the top of this green candle because it's below the 20, which is roughly 29.2. I missed a little bit there, maybe 30%. That's one. And of course, here's the big kicker when it comes to this strategy. Rather than being up a nice bit and then losing it all, um, our exit would have, say if we used the 20, our exit would have been here and we if we held on and prayed and didn't sleep very good for the next couple of uh, weeks, we could have been down to 41% from where we were to. So yeah, I'd rather be out when the market is going like going down like this. So it broke above. Oh, we're back gonna go have to go back to the 50 again. Let's turn that 20 off. There we go. So where we break above the 20 again. Man, this one's been on fire. Let's see. 20, 20. We would have broke above the 20 here. Went down a little bit, but it didn't close, so we're still in. Then we would have watched it run all the way up. It would have come down. Our alert would have got sat off here, but we wouldn't have sold because it's still above the 50. But this green one here is below the 50, so we're going to get out right here. So 64.98% profit in one, two, three, four, five months. I mean, 64% profit is great. And so we got out right here. Then it would have closed above again. We would have gotten back in. Here would have triggered our alert, but didn't get out. Would have went back up, triggered our alert again, but didn't get out. Went back up and then it closed here. So we would have got out there with another 5.5% profit in, looks like, two, three months. Would have been out for this little tiny bit here. We probably would have took a loss. No, it didn't close below the 50. So we would have got in, would have got our trigger, we would have closed at the 50 right there. You see that? Would have closed at that 50. I'll zoom in so you can see it. It would have closed on the 50, so we wouldn't have got out. We would have been a little bit nervous, wondering where it's going to open the next day. Anyways, it didn't close below the 50, so we would have stayed in, rolled it all the way up. RSI started triggering right here, so you might have put the 20 on, but then it started going back down. So our exit probably wouldn't have been this green one because it stayed above. And then that red one here would have been our exit, which is 44.93% profit. And then, of course, the kicker again, you're out for that big run down. So you would have gotten out here, and you, if you stayed in and just kept praying and hoping that it goes back up, you could have potentially been down another additional 30%. So you would have probably cut out almost all of your profit. You, know, you would, have probably, would have probably just had a little bit of profit from the bottom here. And you see how it goes. In, out, in, out. Pretty simple. Um... That's my basic strategy, and like I say, check out the first video if you want to get more finer details, like specific entries, um, a few other things about after hours, like how to get in if you miss it. I talk about bounces as well, so ways you can get in if you already missed the entry point. So check out the first video for some of those additional options, and of course, um, the next video that's coming out will uh, cover... Um, how to um, build this chart pattern on TradingView, um, how to set it up to use it, and of course if you want to activate the after hour pre and post market, I'll show you how to set that up as well. And at the bottom here, I do recommend everybody before you ever play with real money, uh, get real good at paper trading, and I haven't used it yet, so maybe we'll try that as well. So paper trading here at the bottom. Um, 
I, uh, like I say, I do recommend you uh, get good at paper trading before you ever play with real money with this stuff. Um, and of course, uh, I'm going to come out with some more videos on how to find good growth stocks to use. I have a few strategies for finding those, so I'll do that in the next video after the next one. And, uh, and we'll talk about some option strategies you can use for additional income or, or protection on, on your stocks. And maybe even some additional option type stuff. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, stay tuned for the next videos.